G -g -g ghosts Nice. Hello there, my name's Greg and I'm making a Ghostbusters costume, starting with the Ecto goggles. Previously on Greg Johnson Making, I adapted, modified and weathered a Spengler Neutrino wand and its display base. That video recently received the comment that there are no particularly clear shots of the final thing in the video, so always one to agree with criticism. Here are some stills now. Feel free to freeze... Feel free to freeze frame. Feel, feel free to freeze frame. Feel free to freeze frame? Feel free to freeze frame. That's the apologies and fan service out of the way. Recently, I applied to do a Comic-Con, Thought Bubble, in November. I haven't been accepted yet, but I did immediately think I would like to do it in some kind of cosplay. The classic Ghostbusters jumpsuit and belt and ecto goggles. Feel free to tell me that I'm missing a proton pack, a PKE meter and a ghost trap. It's comfort cosplay that I can wear behind a stall all day while serving people. My Neutrona wand I bought sort of a celebration of Ghostbusters Afterlife, and there's a new Ghostbusters film coming out. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Ghostbusters Frozen Summer. Yes, Frozen Empire is coming out this week. So even though the event I'm hoping to wear this cosplay at isn't until November, I thought now's the time. And I found some of these disguise brand kid size ecto goggles online for I think they were about 12 quid plus postage because they came from Madrid for some reason. Initially I thought I was going to make these out of welding goggles, phone VR headsets, so that's the level of accuracy I was planning on. But then I thought well if I get one of these toy ones it's roughly the right shape. I'm using the Hollywood collectibles replicas of the ecto goggles as my reference points. That's what I want it to look mostly like. But I thought, for that price, that's a happy medium for me. We're balancing accuracy, budget and comfort. I'm going to strip them down, add new knobs, new lenses, new padding and straps, paint them, add new stickers and decals, add an interior plate that you don't really need but just tidies it up on the inside, then put it all together, weather it, and they'll be done. Hope these intros aren't too long, now over to me. <gasps> Action! Okay, I've been shopping by which I mean searching through my own possessions, and it's time for another round of Do I Use This Bit? These are kids' goggles, so they're small, but I'm going to detail them and make the lenses bigger so they're slightly more in scale with my face. I'm going to add a plate on the front, because it's meant to be a little plate behind the lenses. So I've got some different thicknesses of plastic and some covered wood. This is olive drab. If you need classic American military, it's not quite green, it's not quite brown. Olive drab. Who's she though? Then for some knobs, I've got these are parts from my old Neutrona One base. I've got some parts of an old carriage clock, some felt tip pen lids, basically just things with vertical lines on for the silver sort of toggle knobs. Is toggle knobs a thing? Let's find out. These are also for buttons. I'm thinking a chess piece. I might just use a chess piece because I like the idea of using a chess piece. For the black knobs on the side that have a slight ridge around the edge, I've got this, these two bottles of UV resin, so I've got two of those caps which I can cut in half. Pirate gun ends, olive oil lids, old camera film lids, and for super fans who've been watching since the start, a welcome return of the child pirates. But enough about them, specifically for this I've bought two different types of popper button, or snap fastener, or whatever you call them. I've got the larger ones in uh, antique brass and the smaller ones in nickel. I think the larger ones are probably more screen accurate, but the smaller ones are more appropriate to the size of the goggles. So I think I'll use the smaller, but I don't know yet because I'm not in the future. Some hex head screws. So these are small black screws with a hexagonal uh, Allen key bit in the top and some round headed furniture nails um, because one of the knobs has a little round button in the middle. For the lenses, I've gone around the entire house and looked for cylinders. Black peppercorns, vitamins, toothpick dispenser that has some nice lines around it. These are furniture feet, might use those because that's a metal ring that mounts into a black plastic base. For the knurling around the edge of two of the buttons, two of the knobs, um, I want to use this packing tape. Oh no, that's circles, that's not diamonds. Not you. So yeah, it's that diamond grid packing tape to use around the outside of some knobs. This is car detailing chrome strip. I could put it around the lenses, but there would be, but there would be a join because it's not a complete ring. So I probably won't use that. This is just a bag of various elastic because I think elastic will make for a more comfortable fit. We'll choose between screen accuracy and comfort there. Not sure. If I don't use elastic for buckles, I've got a couple of old bow ties and the bow tie and cummerbund set that I haven't worn since the sixth form ball. So I'm thinking 
because it's hideous. So if I do need to harvest some little metal sliders and buckles, I may chop these up because I haven't worn them since I was 18. These, you've seen me in the past talk ad nauseam about LED dog collars. Uh, well, what do the LED dog collars come in? They come in these strips. So these D things I might need for the belt key fobs when I finish my costume, but then there's also there's these buckles I could use, but they're probably a bit big. I think we're at and finally. And finally, for the cushion bit that goes on the back of the eyes, I've got a foam floor mat, and I just happened to know in the past to buy some self-adhesive vinyl fake leather. Clever me. Right. Let's goggle. The verb to goggle. Let's go. Let's prepare the goggles. So what are we doing? We're stripping off the very thin EVA foam bumpers on the back because we're going to put buttons and things through the frame so that'll be in the way. And then the silver knob underneath and the two lenses, which I thought at this stage I wasn't going to use at all, not the case, um, I just held on with clicky tabs. So you push those tabs on the back of the screwdriver and they pop off. Then there's some chemical based legalese printed on the bottom, so just use nail varnish remover to wipe that off. And these inaccurate buttons. We're going in with a rotary tool, then an emery board and finally some wire wool for a smooth-ish. You want to sand it all up anyway because you want it to be matte to take paint. But yeah, those, those knobs and buttons are all wrong. So basically we're stripping this down to just the camo green plastic shell. Then we don't need these strap slots because the I'm going to attach the straps permanently with the uh, buttons on the sides. So I want to fill in these slots. So I'm just super gluing little custom cut pieces of black styrene onto the back. And then I'm going to fill in those slots with Milliput, your friend and mine. Milliput, Milliput. Apparently this was the time to drill holes for where all the popper buttons, the pop fasteners go around the frame. And then it's Milliput for the slots. So this is two equal amounts of each sausage. Knead them together, well wet your fingers a bit first, then knead them together for seven minutes. I love a specific instruction, seven minutes. Smudge it into the slot, and I'm just using a plastic uh, clay carving tool there to take off the excess. Don't take off too much excess, or you just leave yourself with a little recess, which I did, um, and then wipe it down. And then this is probably the next day, once it's dry, I did a fairly ham-fisted job of removing those knobs on the side, but I'm just sanding those smoothish. Step two, new knobs. Um, for Christmas, my wife wonderfully bought me some UV resin and a UV resin curing station. Uh, thankfully, two bottles of UV resin, because not only is the resin very useful in this build, but the caps from the resin are also useful. And each one comes with a nozzle, so I don't need the caps. So then I've already cut one down, and I'm just using this quite fine detailing tape as a, as a width guide. Wear gloves. You fool. Okay, and then remove the tape, and there it is. And a little bit chewed at the bottom, but we're just going to smooth it by rubbing it on a fairly heavy duty emery board. Now sticking some of that diamond pattern parcel strapping tape around the knob. Could do an on-screen counter of uses of the word knob. I'm not going to. That's not, that's not this channel. That's not me. I don't love that for me. Um, so super gluing it on in stages. Don't try and put super glue all the way around. Put on about a centimetre's width of super glue. Stick that on um, and just sort of go round. Then some extra super glue around the lip underneath as well and some activator just to set it fast. Cutting up a chess piece. I like them because they're wood and they're nice and tapered and smooth. So yes, I just wrote to read off the crown and I'm trying to get this level because it's rounded, but I kept sanding it and it kept getting less and less level and it was a bit big anyway, so I made a smaller one and sanded that slightly more carefully. These are just MDF wooden discs. You can get them very, very cheaply on eBay. I'm super gluing three together and then using my clamp for the first time. I had something that needed clamping. Then to stick the packing strapping tape around this one, I thought, put it inside a cap so it wants to curve that way. So if you want something to curve, store it inside a tube so that it curves, and again going round and super gluing it in stages, holding it, get as much glue on your fingers as you possibly can. This was useful, I think this is a moisturiser cap or some kind of clear cap that had a little button in the centre, so I'm using it as a centre finding guide. So I put it onto a circular thing, you can see through it and see where the centre is, make a hole with my gomja bar, make a hole with my centre punch, and then I'm just mounting it all onto the gomja bar and gluing them together. 
There is a middle third on that knob, a sort of neck, which I will later remove. Or will I? Stay tuned, keep you hooked. Um, can I ask you a personal question? So I'm just using that piece of hotel bump paraphernalia paperwork uh, as a template for the corners of this faceplate. As I said in my intro, that faceplate should be sort of recessed between two pillars, but that's an accuracy thing that we're letting slide. And there I am, in a good mood. Just wanted to have a quick vloggy moment in honour of a joyful feeling. It's one I personally wouldn't get if I was 3D printing. Nothing against 3D printing as such, but these lenses are an air horn base, a spare furniture foot that we didn't like, into which fits another air horn piece, that's just a dry fit, which fits exactly a toy wheel. That's the lid off a reed diffuser. And I've got the same thing on the other side. This is a lamp part that I got from scrap. I could use a camera film case lid and it all just fits. The pieces go click, the pieces go click and they fit. And it's a wonderful feeling. I'm often in a good mood, particularly when I do these. Um, so this I undenard and I tried, I spent a day trying to find an alternative using vitamin plastic. I just, I hate cutting metal, you know I do. But one of these lens bases, ah, you see the relief in my hands. One of these lens bases just needs to be shorter than the other one. So apparently that was an accuracy thing that I wasn't willing to let slide. And I just sawed around it. It was noisy, it got hot, but it took about 10 minutes. So it's no big crisis. I just, I think I've probably blunted my razor saw. So using a step bit to put eye holes through the middle of these red plastic discs, which as I said earlier, are from, from air horns, like those. Um, and I don't need the part. So I'm just wearing a glove. My brother did get me a, a big drill press for Christmas, gave me his old one, but I haven't, I haven't had the guts yet but I will, I will have the nerve. Got some new snips, so I'm just removing this little ring from the underside of those red discs so they sit flush with the faceplate, and then using quite a light emery board, just sanding up these metal rings so that they take paint, because they're too shiny. The bits that need to be black are silver, and the silver bit is white and black and red. So, fastening those with super glue and baking soda on the inside to make concrete. Then this, again, just the joy of things that fit, that haven't been designed to, but just do. I use four, maybe six of those. I have a lot of lamps um, and I've harvested all the rings from them. So once the depth of that outer ring is set for where it needs to be, take it out again and just glue it on the inside with super glue and more baking soda to hold it. Cause I need to be able to push onto these. So they need to be pretty, pretty firm. Then just a lip of super glue around the metal ring and it's in place. Then again, who knew a reed diffuser cap would fit perfectly inside a toy plastic white wheel? But it does. I've sanded off the corkscrew lid mechanism from inside the reed diffuser cap, so the toy lens will fit just inside it, which is a bit of a spoiler, but I actually use the lenses in the end, which is great, as we're about to find out. So again, this two-part bifurcated lens is held together just with clicky tabs, so I just pulled that out, and does it fit? Oh yeah, it fits exactly. And the other one, the small silver lens, fitted exactly into the reed diffuser cap. All I have to do to make this sit in slightly further is cut off the tabs. A few dots of super glue, and that's the dream. Glue on the lens plate, uh, sand up both sides. Uh, this white plastic was mirrored on the back, that's why it's got that scuffed up silver bit on the back. And I didn't mean to draw a pair of comedy eyes on there. I put the lenses on, traced out where the holes are, and then found the centres where I should start drilling. And I drew some uh, googly eyes. And at no point filmed myself holding them up in front of my face. <sighs> Amateur. Once it's stuck on, drill four holes, not three, drill four holes for where the hex head screw goes. Now, these silver caps I made off camera for some reason, that was a very private affair. Uh, these are just grey felt tip pen lids that have nice vertical lines down them. I just put a wood screw that's about the diameter of the cap all the way through it, through the inside. And because wood screws don't really hold into metal, uh, there's super glue, baking soda and some five minute epoxy, probably hot glue as well, on the inside just to hold them in place. Then to cover the wood screw head, quite pleased with this, that's just a dome rhinestone, like a little stick-on diamond bead. Then once that bead is on there, cover the bead with super glue, 
then you can dip it or sprinkle it with baking soda and fairly immediately you can sand that because baking soda sets super glue that quickly that quickly and you've got a nice dome proud of that this is the trapezoid knob that fits on the outside of the lens so I'm just using a post-it note, I've drawn around the curve of that lens and I'm just making a paper template and sellotaping it to, this is a sample of, I think it's extruded polystyrene? Expanded polystyrene? It's very soft. It's plastic, but it's very soft. Maybe a bit too soft, but interesting thing to work with. Glad I did. So I cut out and carved that shape, now I'm just making markings. I decided to have this knob touch the, the white part the, the little plastic wheel on the back, just for some extra mating surface, for some extra gluing area. <laughs> so I've put super glue around the back where it hits the white lip, and also two part five minute epoxy underneath. Because so I don't like things that aren't physically held on, and there's no pin or screw in there, it's just glue. So use two adhesives if you can. Then I scrape away any five minute epoxy that's leached out and I'm just holding it on with thin masking tape, always very useful, just holding that till the epoxy sets. Using some bits of green lighting gel to green up the lenses, which I'm now sticking on with little dobs of UV resin, not super glue, because super, super glue will craze or make clear plastic, often it will make it go foggy and white. I then cured that with the magic blue light, which I didn't film either. New padding and straps. Whoever he is, I'm padding and straps. This is a technique I've learnt from lots of YouTubers, cosplay and prop alike. If you need a template of a funny shape, just line that shape with masking tape and then draw around it, peel off the masking tape and you've got a nice flat outline. Then for this, I just stuck it to a piece of paper, found what I thought was the center line and folded it because I figured, well, this should probably be symmetrical. Then fold it out and you've got a buffer, a pad, new padding, padding and straps. Put this onto some black floor mat and just colour over the edge, make sure you cut out the inner edge. Rather than draw around it, just sort of colour over it and where the paper ends you get a nice clean outline and then cut it out with a fresh blade because it's true that foam does blunt blades a lot. No negativity but this pad isn't quite right. If I'd had more of this adhesive vinyl leather I would have done it again. I should have made it bigger and I should have used spongier like furniture foam because this floor mat once it's wrapped in sticky leather just basically may as well be a piece of wood. Um, so it's not great for comfort and it doesn't really hide any messy crimes around the back and I tried to stick it on with hot glue and but I remove all this. I remove all the crises and indecision and then reveal them in the voiceover. <laughs> This template for the shape of what the leather, leather should be, I took from Punished Props. He did a very good video where he made some ecto goggles. He was going to adapt them from a toy like mine, but ended up 3D printing and aluminium milling the lenses from scratch and very impressive skill set. Buckles! I had two that were perfect, just cut down those tabs so they're nice and straight. Just used my centre punch to... And I broke one of them. They were nice and thin and small. I think they were from an old backpack or something. So then these were off some of those uh, dog collars. Then I tried to drill the little slot in these two and broke the tab of this one. And then I did what I always do when I break something and slightly panic. I went straight to Amazon and I was going to buy some ladder lock buckles is what they're called. I've learned that to come the next day. And I was going to throw some money at my anger and frustration to make it go away. And I changed my mind and decided those two buckles are fine. I also get to use the slightly more accurate one in the center. So the three buckles don't match but it's fine. I just covered up the broken, messy hole with two bits of black styrene. From the same cheap backpack that I harvested those buckles, this was black uh, canvas strap, and I've covered it in a mixture of Secret Retreat paint that I painted this shelf and indeed room with, some yellow ochre and a bit of black, just to take away that saturation. Here I'm rubbing it with a green wax crayon, which gives it kind of a waxed canvas. Yeah, rub a wax crayon on your canvas tape and it has a nice smooth vibe and then I'm just doing it with a green chalk pastel as well and rubbing all that in then so it doesn't rub off on the sides of my face I'm covering, covering them in matte mod podge nice messy job put them on little uh, s hooks that I made from coat hangers and set them in the sun to dry 
Sometime later, clock wipe. If you're going to spray paint something and you've got nitrile gloves that are just upstairs, go and get them. You're not in that much of a hurry, dude. Right, so one of these straps is stiff and one of them is nice and floppy like it should be. What's the secret? It's the crumpling secret is the secret is what it is. Yeah, just smush it up. Give it a good crushing because they did go a little bit rigid. So the back plate, in the first movie there's a buckle on the back of his head. In the second one, an afterlife, there's a sort of triangular piece of rubber. I'm slightly inventing it myself here because I want a bit of comfort. So I had this wide band elastic. As you've seen before, just use a flame to pretty much seal the edge. When you cut it in a curve like this, you do get some fraying that you can't quite melt, but plasticky material, you just melt the edge and it stops it from fraying. Uh, and then this is the same mixture of paints that I used on the black tape. Not fabric paint, just standard acrylic. I don't know what's in fabric paint to make it fabric, but yeah, it's fine. And while it dries a few times, just stretch it out to make sure it doesn't form a crust. Hitting these black buckles with my liquid chrome pen, because they should look like black buckles where the black blacking has been chipped off. Nice way to tarnish brass buttons, just paint them with matte black paint and then sand it off with a fairly heavy duty sanding stick or emery board. So with this strap I realised because the elastic doesn't stretch widthways, uh, I can stick the strap all the way across it because it's not going to have any give that way, it only needs to have give that way. So I put the canvas strap right to the bottom of the bit of elastic that's on the back of my head. Rivets. Here's how to do rivets wrong. Uh, nice hole punch, that's good. Put one side through, put the back on, put it into the little metal curve thing. And then what you're supposed to do is reach for that metal rod that you bought that has a little dome in the bottom, which you hammer that. You don't hammer the, ri the rivet. The others I actually did right, and for that one, it's when I'm filming, you see, it just it scrambles my brain a little bit. Again, for weathering, just coloured them in with a black permanent marker and then sanded them. So, so I don't have two rivets sticking in the back of my head. I figured out I needed a nose-shaped piece of EVA foam. This is self-adhesive EVA foam, but I don't trust that level of stickiness, so I'm just putting on a thinned layer of, you know, a smoothed out layer of hot glue and sticking the foam nose over the rivets. Painting! Here's all my bits held onto cardboard with little foam sticky tabs made by Sellotape. They've been primed black. The goggles have been primed with, it's called spray putty or spray filler. It's basically a primer, but it's quite thick. And do sand after priming. There's a temptation not to because you want it to be done, but I really had to because I put them in the spare room to dry and put a little box heater on and I think it blew a lot of dust and cat hair into the air, so these things are practically flocked. My lenses came out hairy. So for the silver bit I'm using chrome spray paint I got from Halfords. I don't know why I said it like that. Humbrol Olive Drab, which is really nice smooth quick drying paint on the goggles and then just some matte lacquer on the black parts. However, I think because the real field temperature outside was minus five, the matte lacquer actually went a bit opaque and white. So after I lacquered the black primed lens parts, I just primed them black again. So it's actually just black plum. Brack Plimer. Brack Plimer. Who's he? Who's he though? Who's Padding and Straps? Who's Olive Drab? Who's Brack Plimer? <laughs> they need to be found and punished. Here's some plastic tat that's actually useful. Uh, a jar opening thing. So if you have a lot of paint where the lid is really fused on there, get one of these different sized... It's about distance from pivot, isn't it? Makes it wide and grippy and then you can just turn it. Or don't use the lid of your paint as a palette. I'm really telling myself off today. I'm in a funny mood. So yeah, just using this chrome enamel paint to paint the twiddly knobs on the side and then get most of it off your brush and I'm just dry brushing to bring out the detail of these two black knobs. So scratch where you want to glue on these buttons. You don't want to glue onto paint, you want to glue it onto plastic. And then this, very proud of, this is the ring, the wheel from inside a cassette tape held on with a wood screw um, and then these two knobs made from UV resin caps fit exactly over that wheel. It even has a little trigger thing on the side, so when you push them on, they click on. Which is the joy of circles. The joy of circles, they just fit together. All around the outside here we've got non-functioning brass snap fasteners that I'm just gluing on. Using a brass furniture nail, just coloured in with a black permanent marker as the round bit in the middle of this under knob. Super glue and baking soda. 
So there, that little standby button that I used as a neck piece to make the other under knob, a slightly more accurate shape, just made it too tall and too big. So I then went through, cut that out, glued it all back together again. You've got to make choices. And that is held on with a wood screw wearing a gardening glove on my left hand because I need to hold that screw in place as tightly as I can while I tighten the knob onto it. Ideally, you would hold that in place with a screwdriver, but even my little short stubby screwdriver that's about that big, I couldn't hold the screw on. So I'm just pinching it in place and screwing the chest piece base onto it. Stickers. This is a set of proton pack stickers I bought ages ago. I think even before I had a Neutrona one, I think I just bought them as an impulse buy. But looking again, I realized they had some stickers that would work. So there's the red danger sticker I already had. That's gone on one of the lenses. Then these two little decals should technically be that, be decals, not stickers. But again, that's an accuracy we let slide because these are nicely printed, slightly shiny stickers that I already own. So there's, a, there's an inaccuracy that makes my gags unique. So filming myself position that sticker, I then repositioned it off camera because it was wrong. But yeah, it's a good way to put on a sticker. Just put it on a very sharp thing and you can position it and then press with your thumb once it's where you want it to be. These stickers, I found examples of online, but they were a bit low res, so I recreated them in Photoshop. Very simple, it's a black shape, the font is Arial. And then printed on sort of satiny paper and laminated with parcel tape. And then this is silver paper you can print on, matte silver. So I remade that warning sticker and then I did two slightly different sizes of the side um, night vision goggle sticker that I found online. Pearlescent grey, matte silver, who's he? <laughs> Cast of thousands, everything's people today. Okay, we're going back in time, black and white. When I attach the two cassette tape wheels on the side to put the, the black knobs on, if you want to use a wood screw on plastic, just put some wood on the back and it will hold the screw. So I cut a little wooden domino in half and realized, ah, well, if they were, as long as they're level and straight, those two bits of wood on the inside, they would also serve as stanchions, holding bases, foundations, to hold on an interior plate. Initially, I wasn't bothered what the interior looked like at all, but I decided to do one so that you could do one. So this is black styrene. Always fun to use the rounded corner cutter. Just love that thing. And then just very roughly cut out two holes, which are going to be tidied up or covered by two more lamp parts. Again, it's the plastic ring that holds a lampshade. I, I must have run out of those by now. Tacking those in place with super glue, and then I'm putting a rim, because again, this is a back. Backs and bottoms don't matter. So just a nice hearty rim of hot glue. This is a clear little stud button thing. Color that in red with a Sharpie. And then again, to make sure that the clear plastic doesn't fog up, I'm going to use some UV resin to hold on some inner lenses, just made of thin acrylic that comes with a, a cheap photo frame. And there is the nail drying machine. You hold the button down for two seconds and it just stays on for two minutes. Two sessions of two minutes, I think, and they were stuck on. It's good stuff. Thank you, wife. Let's assemble. As you can see, this plate has a red rim around it. So I thought I'm going to be painting this a few times. It needs to stick so exactly inside the other bit that I just, I put thin masking tape around it. Because again, you want to be sticking plastic to plastic. And I figured if I painted it before I slot it into the other lens, all that paint will scrape off and sort of smush out and it'll be messy. So I've put super glue around the outside and then I'm just very carefully slotting this into place so that it's level flush with the black part. An exact fit is a joy forever. Then this, I think I used some dots of super glue and some dots of five minute epoxy. So multiple, never be afraid to use multiple adhesives. One takes longer to dry, but is long-term stronger and super glue dries quickly. So it tacks it in place. So you use blobs of, of all of them, which again, I did with these lenses. I'm adding alternately little dots of super glue and blobs of five minute epoxy to the two lenses. And then I press them onto the lens plate where I've scratched away the paint and they stick on very nicely. You won't get to see me press them on there. I don't know why. Let's weather. Let's weather the storm. Still using just acrylic. This is burnt umber and black, Mars black. Angling my palette or my, my water tray so you can dip into the paint or dip into the very, very watery mix. 
put it on and dab it off. I find using a cloth is better than using a sponge and then using my rough pastry brush, very dry, just dabbing on bits of texture and might have overdone it, don't mind. I don't say I don't care, that's always an aggressive statement I think. I just don't mind. Gathering around where the straps join and where the knobs are because that's where like greasy hands would be or where you'd have to oil, so that's where the dirt would gather. And a dust pass, scratching on some brown, sort of fleshy peachy colour and some quite bright orange chalk pastels. Then dusting them around with a very dry brush. And the only last stage I did that I didn't film is I hit just the body, not the silver lens because I wanted it to stay shiny, but just on the body I just little spritz with some matte lacquer just to set the dust pass in place. And although I don't like the padding on the back very much, I'm very happy with these and the job is done. And there we are, part one. The goggles are done and there's more to come. Another gizmo and then the final outfit. Okay, let's have a look at the brightly lit so you can see it very clearly. I'm not doing the dramatic stuff anymore, it's just broad daylight. <laughs> Here's some revolving goggles. Today's YouTube channel recommendation. Today's YouTube channel recommendation. <laughs> Today's YouTube channel recommendation is Dan Does. Uh, I don't do a lot of miniature things. I guess Griebling is kind of miniature. That red dwarf frame I made, that's miniature work. But I don't do a lot of things that are this scale. You know, I like I like one to one. I like things you can hold in your hand and costumes and stuff. But I watch a lot of mini channels, and Dan Does is one of them. He made a robot out of sweets packaging, particularly a candy bot out of sweets packaging. that I might copy that idea and do a candy bot. Maybe. But yeah, he's fun, he's funny, he's calming, and I recommend him. Also, about this time of night, it's not night, it's 11.57am, I'd like to hop online and thank some people. Who could I thank? Well, I mean, I could thank... <gasps> Blue Gnu, Christine Horton, Simon Vaughan, Anne Johnson, Daniel Restioni, Luke Dawson, Rob, Alison Scott, Chris Lackey, Clary Maguire, Dagfin Hobeck, Daryl McLean, Eric Gordon, Jack Fallows, Jeremy Ibsen, Jory DeBetta, Crop Edmonds, Ray Ball, Tuesday M, Chris Graham, Chris Whitworth, Custard Waffler, Ian McHugh, Jack Tempest, John Rinderfjall, Mike Ring, and most but not all, in one breath. Quite easy, actually. <laughs> Join my Patreon so that it's hard for me to say everyone's name in a single breath. Then it will be a more impressive feat. I've got unimpressive feet. Thanks very much for watching, lots of love from me, and I'll see you soon.